congratulations to UConn on your championship. Thank you. Thank you. Coach, whenever you're ready. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a privilege. Uh, you know, obviously, as a, as a player or coach, um, to just to be a part of the storied league and to uh, – MSG Big East tournament, um, you know, the, there's nothing like it. Conference tournament-wise, it's it's uh, there's just no comparison anywhere uh, to what this place is like, and um, you know, just to be a part of the history and tradition of some uh, you know some of the coaches and players that have won championships in this league was uh, is awesome feeling, and um, you know, it was a privilege to play Marquette, and I say that a lot, but. Uh, you know, I think uh, those are two championship programs on the court. I think we mirror each other in, in, in so many ways. And um, I just got so much respect for Shaka. I have so much respect, you know, for their, uh, for their team and the way they go about, you know, their program. I don't hear them tampering with players in the portal. You know? <laughs> uh, it, it's just, it, it's, a, it's a privilege to play against them. Classy program, championship program, and, uh, and um, an awesome uh, classy fans. Let's start with Roger here on the left hand side. Dan, about the overall number one seed for the tournament, do you does that interest you? Was it important to you? Would it be important to you? Is it a thing that you would like? Um, we've done a lot of historic things. This guy and the guy next to me have um, done some historic things in their two year run with us. I know we've never had gotten a number one overall seed in program history. So you know, this is a group that seems to be making history in a place that it's hard to make history. Um, I don't know. I think you've got to look at, uh, from the selection committee, you know, w what we did in a non-conference, um, what we did in conference regular season, and what we just did in the conference tournament, I, I think is, is the best that anyone's done through those three parts of the season. Uh, we've been the best team in college basketball. Uh, obviously, March Madness, you know, next week, you know, who knows what goes on there, but you know, we've clearly been the best program in the country, you know, this year. Right here in the middle. For Tristan and Donovan, with about four minutes left, you had Nola time down low to Donovan for the jam. Could you talk about the read there in that moment? Because that felt like the dagger for Donovan, the head tap after you got the crowd in it all game long. Talk about the environment here. Oh, uh, well, I mean, uh, Coach drew, drew up a great play. I mean, the ball screen and um, the big heads, and I saw no help because we had a shooter in the corner. So uh, Donovan rolled hard and um, just getting the ball down low. You know, we'll see what he did today. So just getting the ball as much as we can down low, and, and he'll finish for us. Over here on the left side. You guys put up 95 yesterday, obviously a tremendous offense performance today. You couldn't hit a shot for most of the first half and relied on your defense. Why do you, where, where does that kind of versatility being able, being able to win different ways come from? Uh, I just think um, you know, when you look at our metrics, uh, I don't know if we'll stay number one in offense, but I, I know we woke up this morning, we were number one in the country in offense. We fell a little bit. You know, defensively, based on on yesterday's uh, how well St. John's played and, and the mistakes that we made, but um, you know, we, we, there's just not a lot of holes in in in, in the way that we play. We, we've got you know great offense. We rebound the ball. You know, we're an elite defensive team. Um, we play so hard. Luke Murray and Kamani Young prepare this team for our opponents. You know, we're deep and we're 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 deep with NBA players that are unselfish and. About winning, and um, you yeah, know, and these guys have done this with the huge target this year. Huge, huge target. We've gotten everyone's best game the entire year, and for what th this group's done this year, it's been just a special, special season to this point. Here on the left, Coach uh, Jalen Stewart. Can you get the mic? He, uh, in the run that sort of won you guys the game, he came up really big. Can you talk about what he's brought lately and uh, what you can see him bringing towards the uh, NCAA tournament? I mean, the Big East and, and college basketball in general with, with the portal and COVID makes it tough on freshmen. Our league is especially tough on freshmen because freshmen the league is so physical. But we see on a daily basis what, what, what he displayed out there on the court. You know, he, he built on yesterday's performance. He came in with a lot of confidence. Um, you, know, and, you know, he's a guy that, um, you know, like, like a number of our freshmen, if they wait their turn, there's going to be – be some turnover from this year's team. 
Yeah, but you're looking at, uh, you know, if somebody doesn't tamper him out of our program, um, <laughs> you're, you're <laughs> yeah, but all that shit's going on right now. It's crazy. Um, you know, he's a future star. He's a, you're looking at a, you know, a future star at UConn. All the way on the right, Mike. Donovan, what does it mean to you to be able to perform like you did and accomplish what you guys did together tonight, being someone from Connecticut? I know you had a lot of family members in the crowd. Yeah, I mean, you know, I saw how the game was going the first couple minutes and realized that you know I had to, you know, attack the glass and rebound the ball, you know, best I can and finish around the finish around the rim. Um, you know, today I finally made my free throws. Uh, you know, so. <laughs> You know, but to, you know, put the Connecticut jersey on and you know, be able to represent the state of Connecticut, you know, means a lot to me. And um, you know, I've grown up in Connecticut my whole life and watching, you know, UConn play, and you know, to so be able to be a part of history and be a part of something special like you know we've done last year and this year, um, you know, it means a lot to me. Down front, chair. Alpha players, how did it feel to start the game? Were you nervous in the beginning at all? I mean, it was a slow start. I mean. I, I don't know about nervous. I mean, you know, we talk about, you know, we could compete with any type of game that's going on out there where it's, you know, a fast game. You know, we just try to play the best defense possible and not let, you know, the up and down game happen. And, you know, we saw that shots were falling, um, you know, but, you know, we just gutted it out and, you know, kept kept doing what we're doing and really just talked about defense. I want to hear what Tristan has to say about that. Uh, I don't feel like we were nervous. Um, they were playing good defense. Uh, we were playing good defense. We weren't really nervous. It's just shot wasn't falling and, like, we got to the huddle. We knew. You know, coach did a good job of telling us, you know, we're doing a great good job on defense. You know, they had two points, it was 2-0 for a long time. And um, we, I, I wouldn't say nervous or really worried throughout the whole game. We knew our offense would click, and, you know, that's what happened, and we ended up getting the win. I was lying. We were playing like shit. And, <laughs> <laughs> and we looked like two teams that were playing on three straight days. So. Zach, on the left. Tim, what do you think is why you guys sometimes have to win a championship? Hunger kind of leaves. Why, why do you think you guys have been able to have such a great year after winning championship? Just the, the the culture, the type of people that we're able to get, and, and the way that we recruit them. I think uh, you know. Again, I mentioned it before. I think um, you know we'll we'll start looking at what our roster looks like. Um, you know, once our season's over, you know we're, we're not you know. Doing what a lot of other programs are doing this time of year, even while they're playing, like you know, through third parties, you know, you know trying to pull people <laughs> off other teams. I think we, we've got a real culture, and it starts with the way we recruit people, um, how honest we are about what we stand for. You know, we stand for um, you know how hard we work, uh, how we're about winning. You know, the, the personal and personal development as men. I mean, we, we run an old school you know, program with a real culture, and uh, you could see it by how unselfish this group is. Another game you know, on, a, on a night where we didn't shoot the ball that great, especially in the first half. Another 21 assist night on a team filled with NBA prospects and speaks to just that we got great people. Tristan, uh, about the middle of the second half, you guys get into one of those like bursts where you guys get your separation from them. You know, you had a bunch of assists, maybe five points during it. Can you describe what it's like when you're in the middle of one of those runs, being a part of it? Yeah, it, uh, it feels amazing. You know, um, I got great teammates around me. Uh, it's not like I'm looking for my starting thing. They they find me. I think uh, with the three that you're talking about, I came off a, a stagger from Donovan and. Uh, I think it was Cam. He found me for the open three. So um, it was a great play calling, and you know, it just it just feels amazing. Everybody runs, and everybody can score. So you know, just share the ball, and um, it'll be like that for a long time. In front, and uh, for Donovan and then Coach uh, Donovan, you put up a stat line that hadn't been seen in the Big East tournament finals since Patrick Ewing uh, in the 1984 27 16 rebounds. Um, just. How does that make you feel with hearing, you know, Patrick Ewing's name next to your name, and then Coach does speak to um, maybe even a uh, surprise in his development that you might not have foreseen when you first recruited him to the point where he's at now? Yeah, I mean, to, you know, have my name against you know, someone who, you know, played, who's a legend really in, in basketball, in college basketball, and even at the next level, you know, it means a lot, but, you know, I try not to 
let that stuff really get to my head and really, you know, I'm just just out here trying to help my team win any way possible. And, you know, tonight I realized that, you know, I had to attack the glass as best, you know, best I can. And, you know, I was just trying to be as strong as I can and finish through contact. And like I said, you know, knocking down my free throws definitely helped me. <laughs> Yeah, he, uh, well, then don't listen to what I'm going to say. Yeah, this, this guy, you know, last year he could have been, uh, he would have been a top 20 pick in last year's draft and accepted, you know, playing behind Adama and, um, you know, and, and uh, you know, embraced that and is just a, an incredible, you know, person. Um, you know, most players in his situation in the college game today, the agent would have been calling, the dad would have been calling, he would have been. And boycotting, you know, practice and, and being pissy and everything. But he, you know, he's a great, great guy. And, and obviously, he's going to be a lottery pick, um, you know, coming up here in the, in the very near future. But he just never makes it about himself. You know, he just never, you know, he's just about team. He's got incredible personality. And uh, I've said this, you know, this guy next to me it, it somehow, you know, finds himself as still being an underrated player, which is incredible. You know, because he's going to be a 12 to 15 year NBA player. You know, but this guy right here, Donovan, he's one of the two or three most impactful players in college basketball. Um, if you can't, if your eyes don't, uh, tell, if you don't see that with your eyes, then look at the analytics. All the way in the back. Coach, at the second TV timeout, this second half, you guys were up by Well, I, you know, Donovan played 30, you know, tonight, and, and um, you know, he had played heavy minutes, and uh, you know, I think with Sampson, he just gives you that different look, you know, a little bit more aggressive in ball screen defense, uh, you know, which, you know, allowed us to maybe stop Cam Jones from getting downhill a little bit more, backing the dribbler up, um, you know, but it was just, it was one of those things, it was day, it was, it was you know, game three, third day, you know, two champs, I mean, we're both championship programs uh, that played with a level of desperation and urgency. Um, but we, we eventually were able to find a rhythm and, um, you know, get the separation. And I think that's what makes the team special. You know, Cam, you know, most teams in our situation, you know, Cam has four, um, you know, Steph has six, Alex has six, but most of them came late. You know, most teams lose on nights like that uh, where three of your best players don't have good offensive games. That's what makes this team special. It's going to be the last question, John. Yes. Uh, Donovan, I thought you were every bit as dominant your first trip to Marquette as a backup. You had 20 and 10. Uh, <laughs> the fans were cheering for Snow to get back in the game, believe it or not. But uh, is this just a good matchup for you? I mean, maybe they have more true forwards as good as they are? I mean, I, I, I asked myself the same question. I don't know why, you know, I'm so dominant against you know, this team. Um, but, you know, I just – maybe it's a good matchup for me and, you know, I'm able to, um, you know, just – I don't know. It's it's hard to say, but you know, like I said, I'm just here, just trying to impact the game any way I can, play the best defense I can, and you know, just trying to help my team win. You congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Let's go.